Well, we had an awesome party here. Uh, most of my friends came and my relatives came, and it was good to have everybody here. It took a lot of planning, but uh, I'm an organizer, so that's what I do. We got the patio done in time. That was awesome, so it turned out being a good time. And now we got this awesome band playing, so. And we're looking forward to a fantastic sunset. It should be great. This proclamation is from Assemblywoman Carrie Warner, who I see has been here before and, and given you a different proclamation. And that states, whereas Linda Hermans is the owner, founder, and president of the Little Theater on the Farm in Fort Edward, which has entertained the community with live music since 2005. Accurate? Yep. 20 years ago, Linda retired after working for 40 years as a teacher and after purchasing the property located at 27 Plum Road. She knows me. Realized <laughs> a new purpose for the old wooden barn and created and housed the little theater that now reverberates with bluegrass and country music every Wednesday and Saturday throughout the summer. And this is magnificent. I've never been Thank here. you. <laughs> Whereas Linda's first weekly attraction at the theater were performers from the Hudson River Shakespeare Company, who performed at the Little Theater for 10 years. And whereas, even in the midst of a pandemic, the theater and Linda persevered to provide diversion and fun to the community, enabled by grants from the Lower Adirondack Regional Arts Council and New York State, and even a used bookstore Linda developed to support the theater, producing 16 live stream concerts that normally would be performed on stage at the theater. Are we on track so far? So <laughs> Uh, whereas she places her trust in all who work with her, expressing confidence in their abilities and inspiring to reach even greater heights, and whereas Linda is celebrating her 80th birthday today with a party in her beloved Fort Edward Farm and a celebration of the theater, and whereas a component of this commemoration is a documentary film crew who are making a film to highlight the impact of the little theater on the farm and the impact of Linda on the theater. And whereas throughout the pandemic, whether at the barn or watching from a screen at home, the theater brought foot stomping, singing out loud energy, joy and excitement to the community. And whereas Linda has said that her purpose for being is putting on concerts in the barn for those in Washington County, a joyous service that has brought together friends, families, and strangers alike, lots of them who are here now, I see. <laughs> now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, not me, my boss, the Assemblywoman Carrie Warner, do hereby honor Linda Hermans on the occasion of her 80th birthday for bringing entertainment and happiness to Washington County. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
I read about this place and I just think it's extraordinary and Linda is obviously an extraordinary woman. I'm happy to be here to learn about the farm and to meet Linda again. I'm honored to be here and I wish her continued success and I'm sure Carrie would really love to be here herself. I'm Linda Hermans and I'm the owner and founder of Little Theatre on the Farm. Okay, I'm from Northern Dutchess County and uh, spent most of my life there and ended up eventually in New York City for seven years and I came up here. Um, twice divorced, lost a son, had everything unknown, impossible, go wrong, and you come out ahead on that. <laughs> I um, was basically a teacher in a lot of years, 20 years as a substitute teacher in Northern Dutchess County, uh, Pine Plains School District basically. Um, I'm also a journalist and I've won some awards for my writing. I was editor of the Pine Plains uh, Register Herald for a few years. I enjoyed working down in Brooklyn, which was a challenge, but that was quite, quite the cultural shock and uh, I adapted. It was good. Um, I bought the place in 2001, <laughs> so this is my 20th year here, and um, was working on it. I bought it for my cousin, David Pulver, and his wife, Marilyn, and so they let me come up on weekends and work on it even before I bought it, and I moved here in 2003. And I just fell in love with the place. I, I love brick houses, I love barns, and I looked at the woodwork in this place and I said, whoever built this had money. <laughs> and uh, I just made a deal with David and uh, he said his dad had to stay here and James had to stay here because that was the deal he had with them. And uh, my uncle passed away and James is still here as everybody knows. <laughs> I made plans uh, after looking at the barn and gave them to Linda. She ignored them <laughs> when she went ahead and converted it into a theater. Um, but she did a good job. Um, and, uh, and from the beginning, from the first performance through the years, it changed every time we went in, there's something new was added. Something was fixed. Some, you know, the, Backstage was more finished every time we came in. Uh, the seats were upgraded. So uh, we got to see a, a progression. And and I assume it's still going on. She, she was always uh, improving it. Uh, what's What I love about it is that it's so um, uh, intimate. It's cozy. And when you're on the edge of the stage, uh, the front row is four feet away. So... Um, you get that warm energy back from the audience uh, so immediately as opposed to larger venues uh, like we performed in the high school and we performed uh, in the Strand and those are big open spaces. You got to put a lot of energy out to get in, a lot of energy back. But in that intimate setting with the audience right there, you can you can feel them breathing. So that's, that's a really nice thing about it. One thing I remember... Uh, just the, the beauty of being backstage and going out out the back door, out the uh, green room door, and watching the sunsets over that field while we're waiting for the show to start or at intermissions going out there and, and the beautiful sky. Uh, there's a saying in theater that uh, a theater anywhere is good for theater everywhere. So yeah, the more the merrier, and uh, yeah, we were very happy to have to have it when she opened, and to see it progress, and I'm glad it's still going strong. A little uh, Henry V, upon the king, let us our lives, our souls, our debts. Our careful wives, our children, and our sins lay on the king. We must bear all. I remember when she she first got it and talked about putting it to a theater. Of course, I thought she was nuts, um, but uh, she's 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 done a great job with it, and I'm really proud of her. Um, it, it's it's incredible what she's done. It's, it's keeping her young and happy.
it's something that, that keeps her keeps her busy, keeps her vibrant, and uh, we're also proud of her. Linda's always impressed me. She's an entrepreneur. Uh, she didn't know it when she was younger, I think. But you know, what she's done here with this building and this farm and this theater and this amazing effort that she's done is just uh, pretty impressive. And uh, we've uh, she drifted up here what 20 years ago, maybe. Yes, and literally bought the farm. Yeah. <laughs> As we say, we've seen some concerts here. We've seen. Um, her work on the house and um, develop all this. It's always something with Linda. I mean, she's, she's always working on something, which has kept her young. Yeah. She's a great teacher, great person. Glad she's in my life. And um, I couldn't miss not being here for her. She's a wonderful woman. She had the plan to go upstate and buy the farm, just like, just like those old guys in the World War II movies. They always talk about it. <laughs> Getting a, when you get out of the, when the war's over, we're gonna have a, uh, you know buy a farm somewhere, and lo and behold, then she got the, the you know the the crazy idea of making the barn into a theater, which is like oh yeah, just like in those old Mickey Rooney Judy Garland movies, I guess maybe that was her inspiration. But uh, one thing I've learned about Linda over the years is that you can never. Um, well, you can't say no to her for one thing, but you also can't uh, doubt her because, you know, if she says she's going to do something, she's going to do it. She's a she's a pistol. I wished her well. And in, in secretly, I was like, oh, yeah, that's going to happen because um, I know how difficult that is under the best of circumstances when you you know, when you have secure funding from somewhere. And um, I've seen plenty of theater companies in my time go under. I, I knew how difficult it was going to be. And Linda was starting from scratch. She's uh, she's optimistic and nothing's going to stop her. So <laughs> that's what it takes. And, uh, you know, it's quite a, quite an achievement. It's yeah, it's so intimate. And so you just it really you get the feeling the audience is. the. I always think of the audience as like the final collaborator in any kind of theatrical enterprise, you know, and that's what makes live performances so great because they are part of the thing and every audience is different. And uh, I'm just imagine that the audiences there in the barn have, have a great time. They really feel like they're part of the action. So um, Linda moved up to Fort Edward. She you know, bought this house and saw the barn as a space that could really be a community center. And her commitment to creating a community space, to welcoming in all the folks in her region and creating this arts center um, in Fort Edward, it's absolutely extraordinary. I'm, I'm still blown away by the work she's done up there. It's a rustic space, but it's a great space. It has the flavor of her town. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's comfy, it's cozy. You have great sound and um, it's just a great, a great place to gather everybody together to have a good afternoon or evening. And I think it's great what she's been able to accomplish with the raw materials that she got. Yeah, and she's added a lot of, of value to the community and she continues to do a lot to serve uh, the people around her. Um, I know that she was very happy to be doing the student uh, talent shows, get the little kids involved in, the, in town uh, to learn how to be brave enough to go on and perform on a stage and supporting the local bands and, and also uh, groups that she has come in. They travel from far away to come and play for you guys. You know, Linda is sort of the dreamer of her family. Always since we were little, she was the one who had a new project to do, some new endeavor that she wanted to get into, and just always having something new on the horizon to do and being hopeful that she was going to succeed at it. And not only has she succeeded with this, but she's created something that's hopefully going to be sustained maybe after she's able to do it all herself.
Okay, well, the house was fair in condition. I mean, my uncle was an invalid, so he couldn't do much here. Upstairs was kind of a wreck. The barn was in really, really bad shape. Um, the north side was propped up with, like, poles or whatever, because the, the sills were rotted. The sun never hits that side. And my son was in distress when he saw what I was buying. I said, just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'll get it figured out. Where the, where the green room is, that was a door and one wall, but not on the same side. <laughs> where the ladies' room and men's room are, that was the manure pit for the end of the dairy barn. Well, that hasn't gone far. But uh, we did a lot of work on it. A lot of grant writing went into getting this going. Well, the theater, there was the, back, the wall that's presently on the back of the stage. Nothing else was there. It was a dirt floor, hay, and manure pile. I mean, it was like four feet deep. And so everything had to be done. But at the same time, um, I was going with Tom Dufour, and they came to me from, came to him from Washington County Alternative Sentencing and said, do you know a nonprofit that needs, that needs some help? And of course, I'd already filed the papers. So they were here and worked constantly to get this done. I give a lot of credit to the alternative sentencing people. And originally I had alcohol court and drug court here also. And uh, some of those people had over 400 hours to put in. So we became like family, you know. <laughs> um, Tom did a lot to back up my ideas. Uh, he did carpentry work, but he also helped organize the other workers. We hired, occasionally we hired some people, but one of the first people to come here from drug court was a master electrician with like hundreds of hours. So you'd, I spent all my life driving back and forth to Lowe's. <laughs> my name is Thomas Dufour. I am the fellow that named the little theater on the farm and basically oversee, oversaw the uh, construction of it because it was an old barn in the back. Linda was a friend of mine. Uh, I, at the time, I was the building inspector and code enforcement officer for Fort Edwards. And uh, I got to know her through Marilyn Pulver and stuff. And we were talking one day at her farm, and uh, she was telling me what she would like to do. And I says, oh, you want to have a theater, a little theater on the farm, huh? And she said, yeah, well, when I went back and surveyed the situation, the, the south wall, or rather, excuse me, the north wall didn't exist. <laughs> the side of the building on the west side was kind of leaning in. And where the green room is now, there was basically nothing there. There was some posts sticking up and a few busted windows. It was a major project that took us Oh, a couple of years to actually get it to ha have a black box theater. Uh, at the time, uh, I knew people that had, like, the theater seats and uh, a, a means of picking up plywood for inexpensive from the plywood mill. You know, I, I scrounged up a lot of material for it, and it slowly took shape. A um, friend of ours came to help, and I had them all in for dinner and all, and he said, I'm not going back out there. He said, there's a spirit out there, and I'm not going back out there. And um, Tom went out with him and talked to the spirits, and after that, the next day, everything was fine. But I have photographs that I took, and when I got the pictures back, there was a green haze across the back of the theater. And I, for some reason, took a picture into the men's room, and there's the green haze with a man's face turned sideways. It's not something you have to say, oh, I think I see a man's face. No, it's a man's face. And my uncle and James both said that they've seen a little girl run and hug the side of the building. 
they've been here doing the research on, on ghosts and they found several occasions that they found spirits here. So I just tell them, hey, I'm here to help. I'm here to fix it up. <laughs> and I don't have any problems. I can tell you an incident that happened with me. I was on the west wall, the center uh, post and beam, the upright was fractured. And I got I went to the rough mill and I got a, a timber to put in there. Well, I'm up on a 16 foot ladder. Wind's blowing. It's cold out. There's no north wall. And I've got a sledgehammer and I'm hammering this timber in. And it, it it was a tight fit, I must say. Well, I'm banging away, and when it dropped into place, now mind you, I was all alone. I heard, ah, oh. and I turned around and see if there was somebody in there. There was no one in there. So I mentioned to the farmhand that was there, I said, is there some weird stuff going on here or something? Oh, he says, we got a little girl that's a ghost. Oh, really? So as we progressed along, she was kind of like, I don't know, there, I guess you'd say. And uh, uh, James, the farmhand, says, well, I see her upstairs uh, quite often, and I just took it with a grain of salt. But uh, when, when that building went, ah, uh, it was like it, was, it just re was relieved that the building was going to stand up. So we went from there. Cleaned out all the debris and, and, and hay and stuff that was on the floor and poured concrete, built us, built us a uh, stage, a backstage. There was nothing there. We had to basically construct the whole theater. And I scoused up a lot of stuff. I knew guys that were given, offered the seats for the theater, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't believe the stuff that I had in my possession being a, a building inspector and knowing all these guys, you know, construction guys. And I'd say, are you going to use that? No, no, then you, why, you want it? Certainly, I'll take it. <laughs> and, and as time progressed, I <clears throat> needed a place to stay, so I got a room from the window. And uh, we continued on building until we... Finally had our first show, I guess you would say. We had talent shows and et cetera. Had some good music. And from what I understand, things are coming along quite nicely for Linda. I do wish her all the, the best because uh, I got a lot of heart and soul into that place. I really do. I was the guy that named it, and I pursued to take care of it. I had a lot of work to do because the main barn was leaning and I got it kind of straightened back up. Oh, I worked summer and, uh, and winter on it, you know, on my t time off. And uh, we actually got, uh, I made contact with the county for uh, community service people come in. And we, I had to oversee them and uh, because they, they were quite the crew. And uh, as time went by, I uh, closed up back to the north side of the barn, put in sliding doors so it could be opened up to the outside for overflow if we ever had it <laughs> and uh we hooked up lighting and audio everything that was needed for the theater now the haunted barn was uh qu quite the uh endeavor let's say especially the first one and we had uh, the uh, hudson river drama group they came in and helped us the uh, haunted barn, which was a major help. My good friend Ernie Sites, he, he's a cowboy singer and actor. He uh, performed there with his wife Basha, and we have uh, well, Linda has musical events going on during the summer, which seems to work out quite well for. Her. And uh, well, that's about it. We uh, we in fact us three and actors used to go down to the farm stay in the month of March for our annual meeting and we would stay for the weekend. It was uh, kind of like a, the back part was kind of like the utility room, so to speak. Probably the greatest experience that I had anyway 
was when they did the Battle of Saratoga. They had the English um, ambassador here and stuff. They, these guys put on a heck of a show from Maryland Pulver Farm over to <clears throat> the little theater. It was quite the event. If you missed it, I, you'll never see it again, probably. It, it was fantastic. Unbelievable, actually. They put on the battle. Dan Irwin put in the lean-to and the cement floor in the barn. We put a new floor, you know, re-poured that because it was in bad shape. Um, this last year we had a grant from Glens Falls Foundation and put a 20 by 20 foot patio. And Dan's my man to go to. Uh, I want to tell you the story about the, we first opened up, we had um, like a crafts fair or something here. And I had somebody come in and put stone on the driveway. And Dan came by and came with a stone rake and raked all the big stones out of the driveway. And I went to him and I said, well, I didn't know you were coming. How much do I owe you? He says, oh, nothing. I like what you're doing here. So he's been my go-to man for a long time. I uh, got introduced to uh, Linda and the Little Theater on the Farm um, probably 20 years ago. Uh, she had gotten some shale delivered and uh, needed somebody to do the fine grade work on it. The, uh, I had a Harley rock rake and I, I graded that out for her and being it was my, my first venture with Linda and uh, realizing it was an RT thing, I, I donated my work and we became friends and then she kind of made me her go-to person for that excavating type of work and concrete work. So I've been kind of all over the place with Linda, have a, have a great relationship with her. It's a, we have kind of an uh, ongoing joke that uh, she'll uh, uh, text me or call me in the spring and say, oh, I'm about a week out from having to get a grant submitted. Would you like to come work on it with me? Uh, never a never, uh, substantial amount of time to really <laughs> prepare, but we, we get them entered. <laughs> but uh, other than that, um, Linda's, Linda's a great, great girl, and, and she's... Uh, certainly uh, devoted to her uh, her theater there and uh, I uh, wish her the best of luck. Other things done, we've gotten grants to redo the outside of the barn, repair what needed to be repaired and um, I use a opaque stain. I won't paint again after peel, peeling some of the paint off. Use a stain and you never have to do that job again. So one of the first things we had here before I moved up is 20 years ago, we had the reenactment of the Second Battle of Saratoga here. And that's why I'm thinking about staining the barn because I wanted it to look nice. So I stained the south side and I could only get up so far. And my cousin David said, I'm putting up a sign saying a short woman stained this barn. But we had uh, 30,000 reenactors between our farm and the other uh, Pulver farm. And there were 20,000 people here that were up in this area up on the hill watching for the, for the weekend. Discovery Channel people came and I had set up a hot dog stand. Of course, you know me, I had to make money somehow. Uh, and the Discovery Channel people came in and they said, could we lay down in the back of the barn on the hay? We're exhausted. so. It was a huge event, and we're, going to, we're setting up a display this year to honor the 20th anniversary of that. Our country and bluegrass jamboree is a big one which um, we have five bands. We start at noon and go to 10 o'clock at night. And I like to deal with local bands. I, that's basically what we're about here, is having a venue for area musicians. Uh, but there's been so many fabulous, fabulous ones. The most recent one that, that stands out is we had a thing called Just Us Gals. Our jams, mostly men show up and so I set up this Just Us Gals it's been second or third year for it so only women can come on stage and play together 
And this year, the women didn't know each other. But they, their harmony was so fabulous that we just finished writing a grant so they can make a CD called Just Us Gals. The Blue Billies have been a standby here since almost the beginning. I think our third year, I finally had them. Sandy Wheeler kept hounding me. You got to see Mel and Mark. You got to see Mel and Mark. And so I finally did. But they sometimes they would perform here. Until last year, they performed here every month. I mean, Little Theater is invaluable to Washington County. And, uh, Fort Edward, of course, is blessed to have it right there in town. But for Washington County, it's an incredible jewel. Um, she, you can go there and you can see a puppet show. You can see Shakespeare. You can see incredible music from all different genres. And for local artists and local musicians, a chance to play on a real stage with lights, and a sound system in front of a loving and adoring audience, what more could you ask? It's, it's a just great place incredible. To start. And, and you know, for the community, I wish more folks would know about it and hear about it because what Linda's created there is amazing. Yes. Linda is part of a family of, um, uh, of non for profits theaters that um, are sprinkled throughout upstate New York and, and wherever. Um, I'm, I'm only, uh, I know about the ones up here, and uh, they get funds from LARAC and the New York Council uh, of the Arts, and uh, it's just a wonderful thing for the artists, and it's a wonderful thing for, for the audience who come to see, because uh, through the funds, it keeps the ticket price way down, so lots of people can enjoy the entertainment and the art without uh, having it cost a million bucks. And so for that, I am so thankful for. And thank you, Linda, for being one of them. Linda, don't ever stop doing what you're doing. Honey. That's right. Because what, you, what you've accomplished there and what you've created for our community is golden. Please, it's just keep on doing it. Yep. Keep on spreading the joy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and Smokey's an all-time favorite. And he plays here twice a year. <clears throat> he has his own concert on Father's Day, he and his sons, and he's always part of our country bluegrass jamboree. Let me tell you a story about that. I wanted to do a jamboree because I read about him, never been to one. And um, Ernie cites him, well, you gotta go talk to Smokey Green. So he took me up to North Creek and we talked to Smokey. And I said, can I put on a bluegrass jamboree on a Wednesday for $2,500. And he said, no and no. And I said, if I pull it off, will you come? And he's been here every year since. Uh, Linda uh, has hired uh, different bands that I've worked with, John Cribbs, uh, the, you know, the Trophy Husbands, uh, main, but mainly my dad. She's been a, a, a really great vocal supporter of, of local bands, musicians. So that's how I initially got to uh, got into the little theater, and this was several years ago. And I played uh, many different. One, the, one of the things I like about uh, Linda is she she's open to many styles and forms of music. Uh, so I've, I've played there in rock and roll bands, and Irish bands, and and country and bluegrass, and all all kinds of different things. So that's 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 absolutely wonderful. Uh, it's just an amazing. Uh, venue for this for this area. Well, Linda's r really good to work for. The venue itself is is rustic. It's old time. So a lot of the stuff it's it's just a it's a really good setting for the, a lot of the gigs that I do there. Drums be loud, the guitars bring listen to that lonesome fiddle moan. I wish someone would tell me, but I'm doing fifteen hundred miles from home. I know uh, uh, Linda struggles at times to, to get money, but she's, I think, also a, a very, uh, very good grant writer and and uh, uses the money, the money well. That's that's a, and that's a big part of this thing because it's nonprofit. So Linda does a great job.
originally were part of the first uh, Raptor Fest for the um, Grasslands, it's now Grasslands Trust, um, and IBA. Um, we actually had the Raptor Fest here and it was supposed to be outside. And it ended up that someone had lost a hawk a couple weeks prior, so they decided to have it in my barn and do the demonstrations in the theater. And it was so packed that you could not walk down the hall. You could not get from one end of the barn to the other. Oh, well, after that, they held it in a bigger place because I just said, no, we can't handle this. But from that, uh, Lori LaFont developed the idea of the sanctuaries. And the property all around me now is bird sanctuaries. So I'm not a birder. I can tell a robin from a blue jay, and that's about it. But... Uh, our property is open to birders and photographers. Right now is snowy owl season. So the cars come and go, and that's fine. It doesn't bother me. That's what I want. DEC owns all this land now. So this farm was part of 350 acres. I only own five of it from David and Marilyn. All their property is bird sanctuary, and including 100 acres of theirs over on Black House Road. And there's another one up on... Um, St. James Road. So um, this is just a big area. This, this grasslands area is big on um, birds of prey. So I met Linda uh, back in, must have been around 2010, um, when I uh, approached her about holding an event called Winter Raptor Fest at her theater. I uh, founded the Winter Raptor Fest and worked with Linda on that. I actually invited Linda to be on the committee, and she was on the committee that first year. We held the first one at the Little Theater. Also have been um, involved with her because she allows birders to use the theater parking lot when they don't have events going on, and um, people can go there and, and watch the endangered short-eared owls and other birds from there. Hey, Linda's been a great uh, partner on not just the Winter Raptor Fest, but on uh, our work to raise awareness of the grasslands and, and the birds that it supports. Having it out there, Linda, you know, Linda's right in the heart of that habitat. Uh, that really did help get the event off the ground. And, yeah, it was, uh, it was great. It was great working with Linda. Yeah, I, I spent I spent a lot of time out, out at the little theater around the farm, especially it, it, usually in the winter time because they have short-eared owls are, are, are winter over on the farm in the, in the grasslands there, and I, my hobby for about the last twenty years has been wildlife photography, so I'm out there in the winter time. I'm out there pretty much every evening photographing the owls. Be beautiful, beautiful birds. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm active in uh, with, uh, used to be called Friends of the IB, Friends of the Important Bird Area. Now it's a grassland uh, bird trust. But the, 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 the annual Raptor Fest for the first few years was at Linda Herman's farm. A huge number of people go to that. It was probably too big of an event. It, grew, it, event, it kept growing and growing each year. And I think it outgrew the little theater. So that's when she put it down the road to that horse farm. And it outgrew that place too. It, it, that's how the Raptor Fest got its start, right there. Did. And, that, and that's another thing about, for, for her, that was a huge, I mean, she helped uh, Lori LaFond, who, you know, who started the Raptor Fest. She helped her a lot by doing that. And my God, there were cars were up and down both sides of the road, and it had to be quite a. I mean, a, I'm not sure I'd want those cars, those all that traffic near on my house, but uh, she did. She, she did it. She she set up the whole thing there for a couple of years. When we, that first time we opened up, the first event, remember I said about the driveway, the first event that we had here, Jim Smith had come to that open house and said, this would be a perfect spot for my haunted house. He says, I have it outside on my yard down on Argyle Street. He says, could I have it here? 
Well, we weren't doing anything else, so he said, sure, go ahead. So the first two years went okay. The third year, Jim and his wife were in a bad accident, motorcycle accident. So um, I rallied the troops and we put it on ourselves. I'm Lauren Whiting. I'm a co-producer for the Haunted Barn here at the Little Theater on the Farm. I've been helping build for and scare for eight years now. Eight years we've been involved. Uh, this year the theme is misfortunes. We'll have uh, every so often there'll be a you'll come through and you'll get a fortune told, or a misfortune I should say told. Over the years, Dad has bought wood and he builds walls so that every year we have more to reuse. We just add to the pile of walls that get reused. Um, we reuse all of our donations, which is this wall set behind me. This was donated from one of the photo, when I say Adirondack photo. So we reuse everything that we can in different ways, recycle it all. Uh, Jim Austin has taken it over and uh, the whole upstairs of the barn is filled with props. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit slow with the COVID this year, but we had, a, we had a good turnout. And it's got a reputation of being one of the best and scariest in the area. I knew from working that um, nonprofits get free publicity. <laughs> And it, you've got a lot of benefits being a nonprofit. So volunteers um, can't sue you unless it's negligence on your part, things like that. And uh, it just seemed to be the way to go. And also it makes you eligible for grants, which is probably the number one reason. <laughs> I have always been money conscious um, to the point of being ridiculous, but that's all right. But. When I was working in Brooklyn, I was a um, computer teacher. And of course we had to go to district meetings for technology. And the guy said to me, we lost a grant, can you rewrite it? And I had never done that before in my life. I rewrote the grant, they got the grant, and that's what started it. My writing skill, my, my journalism doesn't, doesn't hurt either. Well, we always have had the barn sale because you have to raise money and people have stuff to donate and that we do that now, we do it three times a year. And when COVID struck and the libraries closed, people knew they could just drop things off here. Well, they started dropping books off and books and books and books. So we opened it up in the lean-to as a bookshop and a little cash box, you wanna leave some money, that's fine. And then when the season opened this year, my board said, um, you've got to move that bookshop. So we moved it up into the barn. And we're still overloaded with books. I mean, I have books, boxes of books in that cargo container out there. But people know that they can come here anytime and the book sale is open. If they want something from the barn sale, they have to make an appointment. And uh, I, what I like about it especially is that people bring a lot of stuff when they're in a distress situation. Mothers died or whatever, and they've got all this stuff, and they just don't want it, they don't know what to do with it, and they bring it here. So it comes in with a little bit of negative energy. Then we have the barn sale, and people going, oh, look what I found, I'm so excited. So the energy turnover is, is a great thrill. And we have it for uh, three days, and my volunteers and I sit out there and we either boil or freeze. <laughs> but it's a great it's a great project. Two or three years ago decided to come over and see what the little Peter at the farm was about. My wife and I drove over and uh, it, there wasn't anything going on at the time and we peeked in the thing and said, well, it just looks like a barn, so we left. But then a year later, we decided, well, let's try it one night. Since then, we come just about every show because it's a great place for us. We live on the other side of uh, Queensbury there, over near West Mountain, and so it's about a 25-minute ride. So rather than watch stupid television, we come running over and uh, enjoy the people over here. Now we've got to know all the people that volunteer, they've become our friends, Linda certainly has, and uh, we enjoy the shows, so that's what we do. We look forward to it at least a couple times a week, all summer. So I 
appreciate her doing it. She seems to be working awful hard at it all the time. Of course, she's a volunteer of many things. And uh, I don't know how she finds time for it, but uh, it's just a comfortable place to come and enjoy an evening of music. And uh, it's just fun. It's like going home. Linda's been with us for the last five years. She's been instrumental in bringing music to uh, our farmer's market, the Canal Street Marketplace and uh, uh, Canal Street in Fort Edward. Uh, thanks to her, we've uh, our market's evolved from just selling you know, produce and things like that to actually an entertainment venue, uh, complete with a stage and uh, something for the folks in Fort Edward to actually enjoy. So she's been very generous in giving of her time and Mike? Yeah, and she's, you know, raised money for us uh, through grants that she obtains and, you know, I, I, I first met Linda uh, before the market started. I brought my mother and my aunt here. They were in their 90s and they, they uh, watched the Beatles play here, the uh, across the pond play here. And my, they were up in the aisles dancing and asking the older gentlemen to dance with them. She's just an, a fantastic person. I want to say that uh, my friend Deb Austin hounded Linda until she put me on the schedule for the farmer's market. And uh, from then on, things just kind of took on a life of their own. I have um, developed a great admiration for Linda. She has done things that she really shouldn't have been able to do just because she didn't know that she couldn't do them. <laughs> she did not know she couldn't fly, so she did. <laughs> But we found so many other things in common that uh, we also became friends very quickly. Probably around 2009, we read an article about the Little Theater and they were going to have a 50s, 60s music show. So being new to the area, we decided to go and we enjoyed it. And then when the next one came along, we went again, only this time um, somebody mentioned to Linda that I knew something about electronic equipment and I was hired on the spot to take care of the sound system and by the end of the night I was invited on the board and make a long story short from that point on I was uh, associated with the little theater in many different ways all of which I appreciate because it gave me an opportunity to do things that I couldn't do before produce shows my band and my friends got to perform here, uh, met a lot of good people, and it's all because Linda knows how to motivate people, and she knows what she wants, and Linda always got her way somehow. Um, but we have a great relationship, even uh, after I left the board several years ago, we still stay in contact. Linda is just a wonderful person. She's done such amazing things with the Little Theater. When we, we first came here, there was just a little bit going on. The uh, Shakespeare Company and maybe some music here or there. But now it's just a major force in the area. And uh, I'm very proud to have been a part of it. I love what Linda's been doing, adding on and making the, the whole theater more accessible, uh, outside spaces. And uh, it's just been a wonderful experience, and I, I consider Linda a dear friend, and my wife and I both consider her that. They took this old barn, as you know, and converted it into a, a, a venue, a theater, really, and uh, they've been working on it. They continue to work on it. Um, they've got projects going on right now, even, but uh, yeah, they put a nice stage in there. They've got seating in there and lights and sound and everything. And they've expanded the seating and they've got an outdoor patio. And, you know, you have to walk in <laughs> through the old through the old barn, through, you know, down through all of this old, you know, farm stuff just to get to the what where the real venue is deeper inside, you know. Um, but it's great. And I don't know, it might seem a little a little uh, <laughs> it's not exactly the the physical building itself but one of the greatest things about the little theater on the farm is the sunsets you can almost always count on <laughs> it's just beautiful up there what's special about the place is 
uh, are the people that go there uh, to hear music and uh, to support the, uh, the little theater. When, um, when I play there, no matter who I'm with, whether it's with Orion or anybody else, there are people from a, a, a part of the state, you know, that part of the world, and that's their theater. And uh, they come out to these concerts and they're, they're loving it. And, you know, uh, the, the other places that, uh, that are available are a drive. And, uh, you know, some of these people are uh, retired and they can just hop over to the little theater on the farm, get a, uh, a, a show that's uh, going to be entertaining. I don't think anybody goes there and, and comes back disappointed. But uh, for me, I, when I go there and play, I see those people and I know they won't go to Saratoga or Lake Placid or any of the other, you know, places that I go to play. And uh, so for, for me, it's that community. And I think that the little theater exists for that community because of that community. And of course, Linda. <laughs> You know, she's a she's a loving, caring person. Uh, for me, uh, uh, Linda, as a person, you know, it's amazing that she has made something out of nothing. You know, a music venue out of a out of a barn, and uh, that kind of creativity. That's impressive, you know, keeping it going. That's impressive. And, you know, it's not like she's started out at, you know, oh, I'm going to have a venue when she was 25 years old. You know, she retired, got this place and then decided to do it. She's got more energy than anybody I know. <laughs> so that's Linda. Well, she's done a pretty amazing job over there. You know, and, and she's, as you know, she's, she's had help and she, you know, they have like a, a board and, you know, and, and people that help out with the, the little theater and everything. Um, but yeah, Linda's done a pretty amazing job and she's a pretty amazing person. And as he was saying earlier, she is, uh, <laughs> when we get there, she'll, she'll say, oh, Ryan, where's my hug? You know, if I haven't already given her at least one hug, you know, um, and uh, that's like the normal thing. She's, you know, she'll say things like, oh, here's my other son, Orion. I don't know if you've met him, you know, and she's just a very, uh, you know, loving, personable person. And I think that's why she's, you know, uh, why the little theater on the farm turned into what it did, you know, that people can go there and have a great time is because she, you know, poured herself into that, of course. You know, but... Um... Every time I play there, whether it's to 10 people or 30 or sometimes 50 or more, um, it's a very engaging uh, experience, very wholesome. Um, you know very well um, uh, that not all the industry is very wholesome. A lot of it sucks. A lot of it is dirty and vile. Um, but, you know, Linda in that whole crew is very welcoming. And, you know, they're mainly a bluegrass venue, uh, but they may enjoy my off-brand rock and roll, even though it might not be, like, typical for that type of venue. They, they want me back, and they're very thankful, and it's just very nice to play for them. When you walk out, uh, when you're done with the show, um, you are welcome to not only a great crew that works there, but um, such idyllic uh, imagery. You know, it's really hard to explain. And I can tell you, oh, wow, it's a nice sunset, man. But, you know, until you see it, it's... You know, news have miles of open horizons, and it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. 
and the hospitality, um, everything about it is great. You know, I think that it's very easy to get bogged down in the why me and why is this happening and no one cares. But Linda and the little theater on the farm were great reminders. But you know what? People do care. And it's if more people were like those folks, then I think you'll have a lot less resentment in this world. It seemed like a very good draw for the uh, clientele that it's uh, targeting. And, you know, if you think about it, the, the target age group really doesn't have any place else to go where they could probably be so uh, secure uh, with crowds and, you know, stuff like that. I like it here. It's quiet. And um, we get along good. We're, we're actually friends. And I know she knows I'm always here to help out. I don't, uh, I don't get by quite often with, uh, without a little thing. You know, she calls them her gicky do list. She, I give her credit because for her age, the amount of work that she does to pull everything off it is pretty remarkable. I don't know how many times I tell her she really needs to slow it down, you know. <laughs> I think she goes more than I do. <laughs> I have a feeling she had the German, she had bought that farm, and I think she had the German idea from this was like 2004, 2005. And um, I, I, was, I really was fascinated that, in fact, I encouraged her at the same time thinking, I'm not sure she can ever do this, you know, it's not easy. But by golly, she's worked that since that time. And and I think she has an interesting program going there. I would call it um, Nashville on the farm, <laughs> sort of, you know, a lot of country things. When uh, when she first started, I remember you know, it was such a rough, uh, how, should, how could I say it? Um, she worked very hard. You knew you were in a barn. Okay. You knew you were in a barn. There was no excuse. They did. She never made excuses. She just promoted it. And then she, <laughs> I remember she would take things that other people had thrown away that she could use. And so little by little, she has done so much. And I think she has a going concern there, especially with um, country audiences and country performers. She um, doesn't hesitate to take on big jobs either. So I give her a lot of credit. I think she's She's learned a lot of what I would have thought, I'd like to think that I have taught seniors over the years. And she's learned it by herself. I, I'm very happy to do that with anybody who wants to, <laughs> to tackle theater, I'll tell you. It's not an easy, oh, and gosh, I can't imagine what it's been like the last couple of years, you know? I just think she should go the way she's going. I'll tell you, she she doesn't uh, slow down. And um, it seems to me that she uh, books a lot of, uh, quite a few people, um, which in itself is wonderful because if you don't have a place to perform, then it's pretty hard to perform. <laughs> so, so she provides that for a lot of people. 
Hi, I'm, I'm Sherry Kays. I'm a volunteer here at the Little Theater. Got involved about five years ago. My best friend and her family was involved and came and saw some wonderful shows. Became a very important, Linda is a very important part of my life now. And I'd like to wish her a happy 80th birthday. Happy birthday, Linda. Hope you enjoyed your birthday after all the craziness calmed down. <laughs> happy birthday. And uh, yeah, I say I've made a few visits to uh, Little Theater on the Farm. Um, I think it's unique, and but you know, it's very apropos for where we are. It's it, it it's perfect, and Linda's forever working on it. Oh my God! But she, you know, she's got, she's got lights. She's got theater lights there. She's got curtains. I mean, it's. Uh, it's let's go, you know. Uh, like Mickey Rooney and uh, and uh, and Judy Garland, you know. Let's let's have a party. Let's have a play. Let's put on a play. Let's put on a show. That's what their line is. Let's do a show. Yeah, that's what happens here. They're doing a show. She she does so much for so many people. Uh, she does so so many charities, and they have. Uh, all, all kinds of, uh, uh, what do you call it, shows that they put on for, for different charities. And I was a charity that they they focused on because I needed new prosthetics. Uh, I, I've lost both my legs to what they call peripheral vascular disease. And they were, they were pretty worn out. And... Um, they needed replacement, which would cost about forty-two hundred dollars. And uh, I'm on, you know, uh, restricted income. All I get is uh, Social Security, and uh, <laughs> I have no way I could afford that. And that's what they did. They had a benefit for me over at the American Legion in Hudson Falls on uh, Pearl Street, and. Um, and, and to show you the the, the warmth and and, and um, uh, I can't think of the word givingness of the people in this area. We made everything except about eight hundred dollars, and a woman came in while everybody was packing up and going home. And a woman came in and said, I'm sorry, we couldn't be here earlier. We had something else that we had to attend. She said, how did you make out with the, with the uh, benefit? And uh, Scott told her, well, we're, we did well, but we're about $800 short. And wouldn't you know this woman who didn't know any of us from Adam, took out her checkbook and gave us a check for the $800. Now, that's the kind of people that live in this area. She was, uh, she was the, the sponsor of it. Even though it's very small, it's, it's very professionally run. They have very good equipment, and, uh, and it's, a very, uh, it's got a very homey feel to it. It's, it's like... Um, well, it's, it's what it is. It's a, it's a little theater on a farm. And I think it's, it's, it's really a, a unique, a unique, a unique. Linda, keep up the good work. Uh, she's a warm hearted person and very giving. And I hope she gives and gets for a good many years. And, uh, as Elvis would say, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Linda does wonderful. I really, I get along great with Linda, and she handles it beautifully. You know, and she's got a lot of ambition. Yeah, and uh, I've known her a long, long time. Like, and I've watched the place transform. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> this was a project that was in the works and. And she was planning to do this thing in this old barn. I came out and talked to her. And I think she, if I remember correctly, she had a sort of was making a change in her life. She'd gotten this farm. 
and decided I want to do this other thing and I have this dream and we walked through this pretty decrepit looking barn, old dairy barn with all the stalls and I remember, what I remember is standing out in the field behind the barn and it's beautiful and she's telling us about all the things she's going to do and I'm thinking, we'll see. <laughs> you know, not that I doubted her personally, I didn't really know her, but her dreams were very big and the place uh, needed a lot to get to anywhere near what she was thinking to do. She's, uh, I would say that Linda is a very a gritty and optimistic person. Um, she has put together something that is unique to itself. It's very grassroots. It's uh, a little bit of duct tape, a little bit of uh, you know hay in the <laughs> hay in your hair still, um, you know. But it, it, very much its own thing. It very much feels very true to its roots and sort of has that a little bit of that Judy Garland. Let's put on a show kind of a feel to it. Uh, just the community comes together and uses it in a way, whatever works for them, I guess, you know, so that there's, you know, it's developed to be a place for theater, it's developed to be a place for a lot of live music, she puts on country shows, she does this hee-haw show, it very much reflects her and what the community around her wants or needs it to be. And I think in that way, it's been deeply successful and also um, somewhat uh, unpredictable in terms of when we were standing there in that field saying here's what's going to happen you couldn't necessarily imagine how that was going to develop but I think it developed exactly right for the community and for her and for the building itself um, I guess the cliche is if you build it they will come right um, I think Linda I'm really I'm so pleased for her I know her as a person who contributes to the community and I you know, I thank her for creating something really important that wasn't there before and would never be there if it weren't for um, her vision and her uh, self-respect and the respect for the community and attachment to um, the good that you can do if you just say, I think I want to do this thing. I don't really have anything to build this on, but I think I want to do this thing and I'm going to find a way. And that's what she's done, and I couldn't be more pleased for her. And uh, and thank you from you know as a person who observes and really cares about the arts uh, for creating something that is um, unique to Washington County, unique to this area, and uh, something that I look forward to seeing more from for years and years to come. Remember, I bet Linda invited me. I imagine that's the first time that I went, and uh, you walk up, and at first you're a little like. What's happening here? Uh, it's a you're on like a, a stone road. There's just this barn, and then she starts to show you around, and you're like, "This is magical for sure." Linda is amazing. Uh, meeting her at first maybe was a little overwhelming. Um, when she wants something, she she gets it. Um, she's willing to put in the work, and is persistent for sure. It, it is definitely special um, to see it. barns in Washington County are everywhere, so to, you could drive by and have no idea what kind of amazing things are happening there. And it's also, um, it really could hold any type of event. It, it ten, I, I've only been to things that were bluegrass, but um, there's really nothing holding it back to be whatever it wants to be. It's a venue that really could be welcoming to anything and that's that's really unique. It's almost like home. You know, everybody's so inviting and welcoming and every year it gets better and better for, for us personally, you know. Um, just a beautiful place, beautiful atmosphere. Yeah. You, you can't ask for anything more nice, you know, as far as feeling like you're at home. Yes, yeah, great. And they make you feel at home as an entertainer there. We have our little green room behind the stage and little dressing room Slinda set up for us. It's perfect because I have to jump in jumpsuits back there. I get on my regular clothes and, <laughs> and uh, it made it a little hard at, at one time back there because there was no little dressing room. 
Linda says, well, I'll fix you up a little something for next time you come. And she had it made for me, a little light, worked out perfect. <laughs> but they do make you feel real at home there on this theater. We would like to thank her for opening up so many avenues for performers and entertainers through Little Theater on the Farm. I mean, what she has done is amazing, you know, for so many of the entertainers. We love Linda. She's a great person. A okay. mom figure. A mom figure when she goes there. She keeps me right in line. <laughs> she <laughs> keeps an eye on me. Yep. Turn the music down, yep. you know, Behave. a little bit. Do the right thing. <laughs> Uh, well, her and I done a lot of different things. <laughs> I was on the board when she first started the theater for, I think it was nine years or close to it. I helped her make the first set of drapes, you know, curtains, I guess you call them, for the play. That was a big job. And I organized a um, a powwow she had there because I, I, I do a lot of um, food at powwows and I'm, um, have, I'm part Indian, so... It was all good. I saw it, the the work in progress. It was a big undertaking. You got to give her credit. There was times I'm sure she probably wanted to throw in the towel because some of it was, you know, a lot of reconstruction without taking away from the, the barn itself. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she's accomplished a lot. I got to give her credit. Uh, she never gives up. It's just a... You know, a project she wanted to always undertake, and she's fulfilling that dream tenfold, I think. We did our first show there, and I think it was maybe 2015, somewhere in there. So we probably played there uh, six or seven years going back. And uh, I got to know Linda and uh, her passion for uh, having a performance venue there. And uh, it's one of our favorites. It's certainly not the biggest, but uh, it has that uh, just down-home, comfortable feeling. And the audience is right there. They respond to you. And uh, we look forward to going back every year. And we just hope more and more people will find out about this place and uh, come and support live music in just a wonderful setting. Her work uh, is just to be commended that someone would take this on who really uh, she isn't a performer but she values the people in the business so much that she would spend uh, I think probably most of her waking moments keeping this place open and trying to promote what goes on there she's one in a million absolutely Um, a lot of our board meetings are held, we're stuffed right here in the kitchen area, but um, I just have a feeling about certain people and I think they should be on the board and for the most part it's worked out very, very well. Uh, the board members love working together, especially the women. I mean, they'll, they'll show up and, and do hours and hours, the barn sale and whatever, and just enjoy each other's company, which is what I want. And of course, I take everybody out to dinner for Christmas and all that. That doesn't hurt any. But I won't ask them to do anything that I won't do right alongside of them. It's it's not my job to stand and point my finger. And I'm right in there with them, mixing it up. Uh, a good friend of mine asked me if I'd ever seen this band called the Bluebillies, and I had not at that point. He says, they're playing at the Little Theater on the farm. Do you know where that is? I said, never heard of it. He says, well, you got to come. So that was my introduction. I came with my friend and was blown away by the Blue Billies, a fabulous group, and, and actually blown away by this location. Uh, it's a pretty amazing place. This is an old dairy barn uh, converted to a really first-class entertainment facility. And uh, that was my introduction here. And I don't even know if I met Linda that time. Actually, I think the first time I met her, was at the Hudson River Music Hall. My band was picked to play there, a classic country band. <clears throat> and Linda came with a couple of uh, gals from the board uh, of the theater. And she just felt instinctively that what we did would go over well here with the audience. And she was right. So she hired us uh, to on the spot to play here. 
and we came, the audience absolutely loved it, and we've been coming back ever since. Uh, I have no idea why she wants me on her board of directors, but she did, so I said, yeah, sure. Um, and I'm enjoying it, actually, it's a lot of fun. It's always a great audience for the folks that come here. Um, and a lot of them came or come to every show. They just enjoy this environment. Um, they are good listeners. A lot of the places that we play as a band, Whiskey River, are clubs that um, geared more towards get up and dance. Here it's sit down and listen. And they're quiet and they listen, they absorb it. Uh, and when the song's over, then they get enthusiastic and they'll hoot and holler with the best of them. A value to the community. Where can you find something like this? People that come here for the first time are simply amazed. Bands that play here for the first time love it. They say, we can't wait to come back. That's the general consensus. Uh, it's unique. She's the one to put this together. This is her vision. And uh, she's smart enough to know that she doesn't know it all. So she's brought in people who have expertise in different areas, uh, right down to cooking hot dogs. I mean, Jane makes the best hot dogs within a 20 mile radius, I'm thinking. Um, she knows what she's doing. Even the book sales it help to support um, the music, the shows. That money, by and large, is going to the artists. Um, she also happens to be a fabulous grant writer. Those are few and far between. She does a very good job of that. So she keeps she keeps the wheels turning here, um, and I think she'll keep the wheels turning for a very long time. Well, so my wife is a planner, and when my son was a year old, uh, she does what she does every week and goes through the Chronicle and all the various things, looking for things to do as a family. And uh, she found this place that had the, um, some events going on, some music and uh, things. And so let's go check out this uh, theater on the farm place. And we went down there and uh, took in a couple of shows. We, uh, My son was a year and a half old and we went to a blue billy show and uh, he was then ended up in the aisle dancing having a great time and reaching his hand out to the old ladies asking them to dance with him and it was just um it was magic and we continued to go to see shows there and especially to become fans of the blue billies and um you know a few years later they asked um my bluegrass band, and then later my son and I to perform in shows with them. Um, and then at that point, uh, got more and more involved with starting to play at Little Theater and then got to know Linda. And uh, right before one of our band's shows, she uh, put me on the spot and asked me if I wanted to be on the board. <laughs> and uh, so she wrote me in and uh, we've become really, really good friends and uh, people, those kind of people that look out for each other. And so, yeah, it's been a pretty great relationship. I think that it's just so literally of the earth. It's an old dairy barn, but it has been transformed into a beautiful stage that can, you know, you can get a hundred people there and they're all there of like mind. It's a special place in a community that once you're in there, um, you know, whether it's, you know, a legend like Smokey Green or somebody who is is new to the community. Um, Linda makes space for everybody. And, you know, I can remember the first time that High Peaks Bluegrass played there. She walked up to the, you know, the band members who might have been there once before and said, everybody has to hug the boss. And that's that's classic Linda. Well, what I see is just a... a incredible group of people that just are just so dedicated to to the place they they uh, you know people put in hours and hours of all just all volunteer time and uh, you know bring everybody has different skills um, a lot of people are you know we have people that are very good with numbers that take care of the the books for us um, we have a webmaster and designer and people that take care of all of that um, Bob Tressler and I work with keeping the theater part of it running. You know, so they, we have people that can take the business part. Bob and I are more into making sure that, you know, we understand that our product is sound, it's music. 
So, you know, and, and uh, Russ Dunham as well has done a brilliant job learning uh, the sound this year. So having just this great team where, uh, you know, really diverse sets of skills come together to, to make it work. You know, Linda, I, I can't show enough appreciation for all of the hard work, your just tireless energy, um, you know, you're, you're gruff when you need to be. And I, you know, one of the things Linda has developed is she's learned that gruff when you need to be means just <laughs> when you need to be. And she has developed a softer side and she and a great appreciation for how hard people work there. But Linda, um, it's an inspiration to see what you've done and, uh, you know, to make this space that, you know, it takes a great vision to, to look at an old barn and see it as a music venue that people will travel a hundred miles to go to. My friend, uh, family friend, Sarah Beth Mason, she was on the board and she, um, she was leaving the board because she was going to have a, um, a baby. I think it was, she was going to have a baby and she just didn't, didn't have, have time. And so she told Linda one day, oh, hey, I know somebody that'd be great for this position. I had zero experience, zero. So um, I said, I, I'll try, I'll, I'll do what I can and try, and it kind of snowballed from there. For one thing, the green space that it's in, I mean, every day, rainy or shine is a beautiful day, does not matter. Um, the people, people I come in contact with, um, I mean, I'm kind of an, I'm kind of an introvert. Um, at least I was at the beginning. Now I'm not. Um, it's brought me out of my comfort zone and made me appreciate, you know, the music that comes here, the people. It's great to see the patrons come here all the time. And it's great to be, you know, appreciated for what I can do. I mean, they, they help the theater. It's great to be appreciated. I, I just love it. Oh, I, um, I joined the Hudson River Shakespeare Theater Company, um, and at the time they were doing shows through the barn, and then one of the members of the theater asked my dad if he wanted to do the Haunted Barn, because um, my sister had worked it that year, so we started doing the Haunted Barn, and from there it just got more and more involved, and my mom joined the board, and then my sister joined the board, and then I joined the board. We're definitely a little family. Everyone's very close. I, you don't see a lot of barns that are, you know, music venues. Um, and I think in the area, it's, it's good. I think the atmosphere of the barn and its history and stuff really adds to the, to the concerts for sure. I think it's a great opportunity, especially for, you know, bands that are in that genre. Um, but we reach out to a lot of the community centers and the senior centers and stuff. And in normal years, they, a lot of times they take the trips, you know, they'll get the bus and they'll all come out and see shows and it's a good way to get them out and, I know they really appreciate being able to do something that's not, you know, it, it doesn't take a lot of energy kind of thing. They can make a day out of it. And now we've got the bookshop on top of that. So people can come in and look at the bookshop and that every dollar we make in the bookshop goes right back into the barn and pay in the bands and capital improvements and all that. I just, I can't imagine that woman doing that all on her own. I mean, there is so much that goes into just, just writing the grants, let alone trying to schedule the, the band uh, concerts and stuff but just grant writing alone there's I don't know how she's done it on her own for so long that, that is a a lot that goes into it I think she's a very strong woman for sure uh so it was kind of funny I used to perform there with the Hudson River Shakespeare Company um and I did the haunted house one year and my father joined me the year after that as a like a helper helped out uh, we volunteered um, and then he became the producer of it. And after that, he made me his right-hand man. So we got pretty close with Linda because there were a lot of things we had to go through her for to build the haunted house because it was her building. So I kind of met her like that. Um, that's when I remember actually making contact with Linda. So I performed in the Hee Haw show. I've done the 50s and 60s show. Uh, I, I do the haunted house, so that one takes up a lot of my time. And I try to attend as many of the concerts as I can. I think it's a different level of friendly. 
it's it's a unique place. I mean, there's not a lot of theaters like this one, you know, in a barn. Um, and there's, like I said, there's never a bad performance. If you like bluegrass, country music, it's the perfect place. We get all the good people. It's a great place. It really is quite fun. There's lots to check out, lots to do. Um, and she's always just a phone call away, which is really great. You know, a lot of times you call and you get like a box office. And with this, you, you get Linda, you know, more often than not, you, you get to talk to the owner and that's exciting. I actually met Linda through Emily Austin, who is also on the board. Um, we were doing one of her sales. I was volunteering that day and she went up to Emily and asked if I would be willing to be on the board. Um, and that's how our relationship started. And she's a very sweet lady. Um, and being on the board with her has been very fun. I think it's a very peaceful place um, just because of where she is. Um, it's a beautiful spot that she has. But also we all just come together, really, especially doing like sales and stuff. And it's really cool to see how we can all connect and get a job done and help Linda out. Um, definitely been a lot of laughs with us, especially working with Linda. Um, you know, she's a very good businesswoman, but I feel like some people don't see how sweet she can be at times. Um, so working with her is always fun. And it's definitely been an experience to see how things work on like the business end, because we get spreadsheets as well of what we spend this month in. Again, that's very beneficial, I think. Um, and just to see how she actually runs stuff, because I've always wanted to open like my own business. Um, for kids. So just learning how to be like a businesswoman, like Linda is, is very helpful. Uh, I knew someone who was on the board previously and uh, was helping him do some work around the, the theater there. And then uh, he talked me and I said, there's nothing for, uh, they need someone else to, to get on the board. So I joined, get together and discuss uh, plans and uh, what's going on and uh, it's a good venue to uh, attend. You know, it's uh, intimate and and uh, got some good bands in there, groups, and uh, I like going just to uh, you know attend the shows. When I go to do the sound, it's uh, fun just attending the shows. Uh, country setting for one, it's uh, definitely uh, it's set in a a way that's. Uh, Certainly uh, country oriented, country bluegrass, you know, the setting, the wide open fields. And I think she's does a great job. You know, she's uh, it's a lot of work managing it and uh, taking care of things. And she's probably working uh, sometimes all day. I enjoy it. You don't always make ends meet with the shows. Uh, that's been one thing good about the, the book sale is that we made enough money that this past year we could give every band an extra $200 and singles $100 because they've had a rough year and the audiences weren't what they usually are. And they get paid a percentage of, of uh, the audience take, you know, what they come in. Um, but just, just keeping it rolling financially has been it. Number one, it helps the musicians. Um, people don't realize that if musicians don't have a bar to go to, chances are there are not going to be many places to perform. And they love playing to an audience that's not hooting and hollering with a drink in their hand. So that works out well. And we keep our, our admission fee really low. It's $7 for seniors and $10 for everybody else. And therefore, it's open to anybody. Anybody can afford to come. You know, and uh, some people come to every single show we have. But, you know, but then, of course, we kind of bend your arm to buy a raffle ticket, but that's okay. <laughs>
<laughs> you got to make the money somehow. They're appreciative that we have it. Um, they feel it's an asset to the community. Just having so many people be so happy here. Everyone from my board members to the people that come and the people that even come and push somebody in a wheelchair and whatever. I stand at the top of the ramp as they leave the theater. And there's such a good energy. They're so happy they came. They had a wonderful time. We'll be here again and whatever. And that's, that's my reward. This has not been a lifelong dream. It just sort of fell into place. So, um, yeah, there's not much I would change right now. We average about 37 shows a season. We start in May and continue to um, the end of September. And it's all kinds of things from Elvis on up and down. And I also do the arrange for the music for the marketplace for their concerts and Locktoberfest. If you like what you're doing, it isn't work. And as you know, I just turned 80 and I have no intention of stopping. In fact, I wouldn't know how to stop this. <laughs> I'm hoping it just continues going on like it does. You know, it's, it's been it's been a proven plan. And uh, we have enough help with volunteers. And there's no reason we just can't keep going forward. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you've made it possible because without the support of people either coming as audience or donating or whatever, we, we couldn't be possible. I mean, we have no paid employees, and uh, so it's a big community effort. I've had people that live in Fort Edward, and they said, I didn't know you were here. So, read the paper. Look at our signs. Um, when they do come, they said, I can't believe that this has been here, and I've missed it all these years. So I would say satisfaction guaranteed. I will give you your $7 back if you don't go away happy. <laughs>
And that's our fancy schmancy ladies room. <laughs> Everything around here is according to code. The men's room you don't need to see. Okay, we're going to be having a whole bulletin board here about the reenactment of the Second Battle of Saratoga, which was held here in 2002. So we're going to get some memorabilia together to acknowledge that. Here we go. Down the ramp. And this is our theater. Okay, we can seat 70 here and another 40 or so out in the lean-to. I, when I first bought the property and decided what I was going to do, Someone told my friend, gee, I got a barn full of theater seats. You know, anybody wants them. And I was over there the next day with my truck. Uh, the ones in the front here have been replaced by ones that were given to us by Roy Ankin, who was a mayor of Glens Falls. And his wife had them in the garage after he died. And she said he always wanted his own theater. So she gave us the seats. So here's, these are the cushy seats here. <laughs> From back here, again, the invasion of the haunted barn. This is our setup for live stream, and that's our sound and lighting system over there. It's new this year that we're videotaping all of our shows. Back here is a lean-to, which we built after the almost the first event here. The Washington County Historical Society wanted to use the premises. They said, oh, we'll probably have five to 10 people. They had 95. Fortunately, I had bought some chairs, but there was no cover. And I said, what if it had rained? So I designed it, we built this, which all, all the plastic opens up. But a lot of times this is full. This year, not so much because of the virus. Okay, let's go this way and check out the stage. We've got extensive sound system and uh, microphones, all that. This is a hand crocheted flag that was given to us. And this over here was done by one of our former board members. It's a hook rug with the barn and the flags. Just gives it a nice atmosphere. Okay, let me show you the patio, which is our latest adventure, venture, whatever. This ring is the old silo that was here. So when I had this built, I said, bring it up to the silo, but I still want to see the silo. We have some fantastic sunsets here, and occasionally I will stop a show and tell everybody to come outside and see the sunsets. One time we had a hot air balloon come down and land right out there, and we were having a bluegrass jam. So I had all the musicians come out and play for the people in the balloon. Well, that was great fun. We have a lot of hot air balloons around here. Makes a good time. So we have two nine by 15 umbrellas that we put up so that people can sit out here and enjoy it. Now I can't see. <laughs> Watch your step. Come on back, we're not fancy. Someone donated this barber chair to us, and we only use it every year for the Hee Haw Show, for that routine that gets done. And nothing fancy, nothing fancy at all. Back here is our green room. That's where musicians hang out when they're getting ready to go on. It's also the makeup room for the Haunted Barn and whatever. <laughs>
So we have concerts from the beginning of May until the beginning of October. Uh, this year we had 40 concerts. Last year we weren't able to have any, but we have a grant from New York State Council for the Arts and they asked us to videotape. So we have musicians here, we videotape them and put them online. So technically, this is our 16th season. That's just winding down. And uh, we have, I would say 90% of our audience is seniors. And uh, that's fine. We're happy. Everybody has a good time. That's all that counts. This is our, la our latest addition, this patio. And uh, it worked out well this year because people were worried about COVID and being cooped up inside. So this helped us expand our facilities. We're not fancy around here. <laughs> all the land surrounding my property is all bird sanctuary with the Grasslands Trust. And um, gee, nobody can ever build here. <laughs> Love it. is one branch that I had taken down off my big cottonwood in the front. That was done a couple of weeks ago. Enormous, enormous branch. When we have the 10 hour country and bluegrass jamboree, we open these up and put a 20 foot tent back here. So it's uh, free flowing. We've had a lot of money, grant money, to um, upgrade the outside of the barn, as well as the inside. So we're keeping the building in pretty good shape. You should have seen it when I bought it. It had some sort of planks or something holding up the side, and my son just scratched his head because the sills were rotted, it was half open, and I said, just trust me, trust me. <laughs> Let's go this, well, I don't know. Let's go this way. There's nothing fancy up there. When I bought this property, from here down to the pond was all swamps. And used to have to step on bogs to get down there. We put in all the swales. And now you can actually drive down there. This is where the area where we had powwows. I think it was 2011 around there. We had two or three years. We had major powwows here. This is the back entrance to the green room. We have ramps instead of steps. This is the first one, and then we built one up this way so he could get in either way. Don't look at that over there. That's all our benches, all the totes from the barn sale stuff. You reach a point where you don't know where to put things anymore. So I'm eventually going to cover that with a tarp. That's about it. We've made the circle. with no money. I put $5,000 down on this place. Okay. And um, had a little bit of savings, refinanced twice, did a lot of grant writing. But if you're determined to make something work, there's a way. 
And if there's a big door in front of you, maybe you weren't meant to go in that direction. Adjust a little bit and, and go around from there. But stay positive, encourage other people, support other people, and what you need to have done will get done. While well, we've lived in your big cities And I've traveled coast to coast But the Adirondack Mountains Is the place I love the most Well, high up on a ridge Up in Hartford we abide
on. 